So, um, uh, first of all, I want to thank, uh, thank you very much to Patrick and to Mark to organize uh, that, uh, that meeting. I think that it's a, a good opportunity to share knowledge and to know and receive information and exchange information on different very important issues. So, uh, my talk would be uh, related to Media's project, but, but also I will just give a short overview about openness, sharing and reproductibility of models because I think that it's uh, important to, to give a framework of what, uh, how Medeas was designed and what is the main outcomes that we pretend with Medeas. Um, Medeas project is led by CSIC, Spanish Research Council. I'm the project coordinator and we are at, uh, a consortium, a team which is uh, uh, composed by 12 institutions. Between them there are research institutions, energy agencies, uh, enterprises, NGO. So we are very mixed uh, consortium, but we, when we design the project, we pretend to get involved different stakeholders and uh, areas of knowledge to uh, give us uh, insights and give uh, information for constructing uh, a new model. And uh, that model will have two main, uh, two main just uh, um, uh, aims. One is to be uh, full open source and op uh, just uh, user based and aims to use, uh, to to focus on the to, to build a community to 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 have uh, contributions for different users and secondly which is more let's say technical part will be focused on societal impacts climate impacts and uh, resources limitation for the energy transition in Europe so Going more specific to the talk, I will just uh, go off a brief introduction about the current need for openness and reproducibility in energy models and uh, the openness in, in data and models. Then I will present uh, shorter the MDS project because I, I, I'll try to make that in 20 minutes. So I'll give uh, you the opportunity to ask precisely about particular things in the project. And then I will make some conclusions. So first, um, I would just uh, um, just uh, bring your attention about one paper in, in science a few months ago about the need of more openness in energy models and energy data availability. So, but I think that we need to add to that 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 uh, models ac uh, be accessible. It's not enough to make the models transparent. We need also to consider that we need uh, um, a tool, which is a model, that need to be uh, very useful for policymakers and the stakeholders. So the model will be widely open, used, and test. So uh, transparency is uh, one of the basic uh, uh, assumptions, but there is another assumption that which also I think that uh, most part of the energy models just consider that need to go beyond energy field. And here in Medeas, we will focus on societal aspects, socioeconomic aspects, and environmental aspects. So, uh, just, there is a lot of initiatives. I will only bring attention to a few of them. There is more of them. So I just pick up three of them. One is Inipedia project. The other is the open power system data. And then the open energy modeling framework that you have already heard about uh, that initiative. And there is also the open uh, modeling platform to, uh, to that between others. So going more in detail about what is Mereas, what is the project objectives. First, to develop a modeling, uh, a model tool based on system dynamics approach. We will use three models. We are using three models. First is the system dynamics approach that you, you, uh, we are just uh, using as a core model. And then we will compare that model with times in Austria and LIB in Bulgaria. Then we just uh, focused in the, and to filling the gap between the design of the model and, and then and the implementation of that model and policy issues. That will be uh, the future work packages. We will start with that activity next year, as uh, soon as the world model will be will be released publicly. Then about the transparency, 
transparency will have uh, will have a um, big uh, just uh, focus in in medias. Uh, we will just achieve pretend to achieve that transparency using uh, open source language, which is Python, and uh, second, um, including internet, a massive open uh, online courses, and uh, having detailed manual of the model, and also. Uh, release uh, have a user forum for just exchange information about the model, um, the, the different the different model versions and different uh, model architecture. And um, uh, as I said before, a Medias model will be constructed based on the framework that we need to move from a fossil fuel social economy based fossil fuel based economy to a renewable energy sources economy. And we will look at that just because uh, it's mandatory for the IPCC and the European Commission, but also we will just uh, uh, try to find if there are constraints in that pathways to the, to the decarbonization for, for to, to just uh, explore that, that uh, different issues that can appear in that transition to the renewable energy sources, we will just uh, rely on some scenarios. So we will uh, just uh, take some key scenarios to see how that transition can be made without using the model. So first we will just look at what are the scenarios. We will focus mainly in the IPCC scenarios, particularly not only the, the radiative concentration pathways, which is uh, uh, just only CO2 emissions, but we will also use the SSP scenarios, so, so the socioeconomic shared pathways. Uh, that have been published recently for uh, for the transition for the different scenarios that we will have in the you know the projections in the in the near future and uh, until uh, 2100. So uh, we will divide that the scenarios in Medias in three main lines evo in evolution lines. One is uh, business as usual. The other is the optimal transition, which means uh, what is the best pathway, the best scenario that we can advise and follow to have a very good and smooth transition to renewable energy sources. And then there is a mid-level transition and on what can happen if we wait till 2000, instead of starting in 2020, starting in 2030 and see what happens in, 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 that, in that case. And as I said before, uh, one key uh, thing here is just to look at physical constraints. So I would say that the model is based on energy, not in euros or dollars. So the currency exchange of the model is energy, not, uh, not economy. So just a scheme here to show what is the evolution in the, in the x-axis is the time evolution and the y-axis is the a level of decarbonization of society. We, will st we are now in the business as usual. We assume in our scenario that we are now in the business as usual. And we will look what happens if we follow that business as usual. So uh, if we will reach the, uh, the objective that the set plan and the roadmap, uh, it's just uh, uh, posing for the future. And then we will uh, explore, we are exploring the optimal transition and the mid-level transition uh, in the future, and we will just have, and we will have already some some just some results that we can just discuss. Um, if you are interested in that, uh, about what is the amount, for instance, of the renewable energy sources that should be implemented to reach the two two degrees uh, objective of the IPCC. So. Um, how, what is the specific architecture of the model? So we will just uh, uh, go for a, um, a nested approach. So now we are about to release and to finish the global model, which is a model that just uh, considers um, in an in integrative way uh, the whole world and uh, tries to, uh, um, to just say, make projections, not forecasting, of what will be uh, um, just um, um, well, what will be the evolution of the system in the future regarding the different conditions of business as usual, mid-level or 
uh, optimal transition. And what we will use as a concept, as a baseline concept in that, in that design of the model is what is called energy return on energy investment. And um, um, we will just consider that, for instance, for the evolution of the fossil fuel uh, net energy that can be obtained in the future, and if that has impacts on the necessary energy resources that we need to invest to shift from fossil fuel to renewable energy sources. And as uh, I, I will say, I, I want to say that the Python version of the model will be released at the end or beginning, very beginning of next year. So you can download it and, and just uh, use it uh, just for free. You only just need to, 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 to enter and register to, to the Medeas web page and you will just obtain the code in Python. So precisely, uh, there are some issues in, the, in that nested approach that we will have three levels, world level, European level, and country-based level. That country-based level, it's, uh, we will, uh, in the Medeas model, we will focus on um, Austria and Bulgaria because we will just uh, use that two countries to compare with the two models that we already have in the project, times and leap. And then we need to, to take into account the uh, allocation and reallocation in resources and in between economic sectors. We, will, we can explain that more in detail, but the, the model has different modules that I will explain, and that modules uh, can just uh, allow us to see how the economic structure change regarding the different evolutions of the model. So, more precisely, what looks like the model now? Uh, there are uh, six modules, and we make the, the model very modular because one concern that we have is uh, um, to use the model, it will be very easy to understand and to, and to get proficient on it. So what we are programming now in Python is just we will have one core model, which will be the energy model, the, the energy module, and then we will have coupled to that and interacting with that module, the other different modules. So you can start to play with only the energy module and then adding different modules to your model to learn how to, how to just use the model. So we, as we care about, about the energy resources and the material resources and the impacts of renewable, uh, of, uh, renewable energy sources deployment, so we have three specific modules. One is uh, land use, the other is materials, and the other is climate model. So we are designing a model that just constrains the evolution of the model regarding the constraints of uh, materials, raw materials, and uh, land uses. And also we have an economy uh, module, a social economy module, that has, that used uh, what it's uh, called world input output database, and uh, the, on that, uh, on that um, uh, input output matrix, we have uh, 35 uh, economic sectors, and that will give us uh, the be economic behavior of the evolution of the model. And uh, just the last module, but not less important, is the social indicator. So for each evolution of the model, you can uh, obtain from the model uh, some social indicators that gives you information about how that behavior or evolution of the model can impact the societal aspects. Just to look like uh, what is the different interactions of the model, here you have the, the energy module with different sectors. The colors just uh, are inputs from other modules, uh, raw materials and, uh, and uh, land uses, so on. So the main outcomes of the, of the Medeas and of the model, uh, aims, uh, the Medeas model aims to be community-based. So our objective is to put online a tool that it's a core tool that uh, users can modify and complement like the, you know, the open source codes like, like Linux, Linux and other uh, operating systems. So here, the, the, the experience is that um, because I am coming from, from earth science uh, field, as soon as one code gets released and becomes open source in, in, in other uh, scientific fields, it gets more uh, and more users involved. 
Then the other thing is that the learning curve of the use of the model could be also taken into account just by the model modularity. So as I explained before, there is a core model, which be the energy model, but that model, as soon as you just learn how to use it and learn uh, how are the different uh, code and, and mathematical expressions on there, then you can just extend the model for the other modules. Um, so then the model complexity can be reduced or increased by switching on of the different modules. We will also have teaching material, as I, as I previously said, uh, with the potential modelers, and, and we will release also some dif uh, different manuals to uh, de devote to a non-specialist uh, uh, audience. And as I said also, there will be an user forum where uh, the, the users can uh, just uh, provide opinions, just share code, and so on. So just to conclude, Medias project is implementing an open source model uh, at three geographical levels, just to to give uh, insights and give information and knowledge and uh, about how the energy transition from fossil fuel to renewable energy sources can be can be implemented in the near future. Uh, the global version of the model will be available this year. At the end of this year, uh, we will have also at the end of the project, which will be at the end of 2019, uh, a MOOC and a manual and a users forum. And Medea's uh, model is composed of six main modules, uh, which are pretended to be the core model for other uh, nested models in the European, so the European and country-based uh, and country uh, model level. So thank you very much. Okay, so many thanks. Yeah, thank you very much for that presentation. Um, I really like your approach. I have some questions about that, and uh, one thing, one other thing. Um, you you, uh, you uh, showed the the open energy modeling framework, which is Python based. Did you use the libraries which uh, which are in in UMAF, or did you develop your own? If you develop your own, it would be very interesting to know why you you did that. Because uh, so, where are the weaknesses that you saw in other open models? That you wanted to make, uh, what what did you want to make better, or um, and are you will you will you join if if you're not inside this framework will you join uh, this uh, this community because I mean that is also an open community developing these kind of models and that would, would be really great to have a common European model that you're developing there with all this I really love the material and the land use stuff that you uh, that you connect with it and. Um, the second question is for the uh, for the Q and A. You say you're going to make your own forum. We were discussing like uh, one month ago or something like that at the uh, Open Energy Modeling Initiative with the is uh, International uh, Modeling Initiative that uh, that we would like to have uh, the question and answers to the open models on a common platform because they are similar so often. Uh, like uh, Osmosis and Ermov often face the same questions so we said that could be a, uh, a good possibility to join that on one platform and uh, just last week I think or some days ago uh, there was there was a forum um, extended to the question and answers section where all this can be solved together so would that be a possibility for you to think of joining the other open uh, projects instead of making an own platform yeah thank you very much for that that uh, questions and that uh, offers and I, and I take it so thank you very much we will just uh, keep in touch and 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 collaborate in that regarding the code you know coding it's always difficult so and code it's more uh, I mean sometimes I'm not saying that it will be the case but as a first approach the model uh, it's code in two phases Modelers are using the, the code and are coding it in Bensim, not in Python. And we in CSIC, we are translating that Bensim version to Python version. So sometimes, and I think the most times, it's not only to have code, but to exchange information by, with the programmers. 
So in that sense, we will just uh, uh, forcing that it's better to first have our own code and that, of course, after that, we will, we will just share that code and try to make common code with different platforms. So it's a good idea. But uh, uh, as we design now, it's just a, a matter of communication. So modelers are now programming that in Bensim, and we have a postdoc that it's translating that to Python. So, but of course, we will look at the, and we are very interested to just to implement some sort of, you know, EDO solvers or something like that, that we are using and, and share knowledge about that, of course. And about the forum, it's one thing that it's uh, written in the proposal. So we need to, to do that because we just uh, promise in the, in the model that we will have that user forum. But again, we can exchange information, we can share efforts, and we can make some sort of, you know, very, um, a share forum or something like that, because we, we haven't started to do that because we, our main objective now is to release the model and the model in Python, and then uh, we can do that. Added to that, we have also a database management system in the model. So we can, and that is another thing. So all the data that we use will be open data. So the user can download it just together with the model or independently to the model. And that poses another thing about, you know, open data things and that. So we can also discuss on that. But yes, um, we are open to, to uh, every initiative that is collaboration and everything. So thank you. Yeah, if Now, now it's working. Thank you. Um, I have a more or less a comment, um, and I would like to extend this proposal, namely in the sense, or from my point of view, it is really a fairy tale that models are getting better when you just put them on a, on a let's say, on a web, web, uh, web interface, and then expecting that people are discussing about codes and blah blah blah. So this is, in most of the cases, an issue which takes place in particular expert rounds. Who have the expertise to do that? When you talk about land use change, about a land use model uh, or module, for for example, then you need to have on board people from the land use arena, which can explain you or who can explain you uh, what kind of processes are relevant in this sector, and then you need a tr uh, probably a, a computer scientist who translates it in the code. So this is a very very particular specialist work we have to do. When it comes to uh, comparison, I would really prefer much more to develop a kind of a protocol about input-output variables, so in, or target variables, you can also say, just and then to perform a kind of an intercomparison uh, amongst the models, just in order to figure out whether the output of the model, which of course all should support or will support the European policy making, that this output is then compared yeah, and, and uh, evaluated in the sense that we have an idea how large the variance of the output could be. Because this is, I guess, the most important issue the Commission likes to know from us. If we have a variance of 100%, then of course you can state, okay, so what, so what, what was the, what was the output of this uh, exercise? Yeah. So, and if we have, uh, let's say, as an output that the variance is around five or ten percent, then of course we can say all the models or most of the models are pointing in the same direction. So this makes a difference, I guess. And therefore, but for this purpose, we really need a kind of a common agreement amongst the modeler, group, modeler groups. Yeah. Uh, about a certain modeling protocol and, and, and um, of course, uh, something more. But this could be a nice exercise from my point of view. Yeah, just uh, I want to make a comment just following your line. Um, I totally agree with, yeah, with you. But the thing is that we can, because we are facing now that in, in MIDIS, previous to a standard of models, we need to have a standard of data and metadata. <laughs> because without data, we don't have models. And we, not, we need to, to have some sort of, you know, uh, data standards for modeling point of view, for modelers. 
okay? Yeah, input. It's what you call input. Because that input limitations will give us some constraints of what can be done in the model inside. Um, so just, just one thing is um, I think we have room for discussion on uh, what to do next. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing is that obviously you have uh, grant agreements, uh, but uh, you should not think that these are cast in concrete. Huh? Uh, so, uh, you know, you will, we will need to discuss also with your uh, direct uh, program officer. But obviously, if there is a, a clear good idea of doing something better than foreseen two or three years ago, uh, you should go for it. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, I have the impression that in many projects, uh, one of the output is to produce a user-friendly uh, web page so that people can play around with the results and so on. Example, the global calculator. Um, is the demand for, for this kind of tool so huge? Or, or is it something we are, we are working on and we invest a lot of, of time and money th and this has no that nobody uses that in the end. I, I'm just wondering, maybe we can have some uh, input from, from Jürgen. And also uh, on, the <laughs> on the MOOC, uh, what kind of uh, MOOC do you want to provide? What, what, what are the topics and who would you like to reach? Yeah. So Shall I answer directly? Yeah, give the word to Jürgen. Okay, so. <laughs> In terms of the global calculator, I can say that we have several 10,000 requests or, or accesses to the, to the internet, uh, to the website. So obviously the market is there. Yeah? And this is also expressed by the huge amount of, of uh, press responses uh, the team received. So this is, and, and I mentioned it also on, on, on one of my slides. So the market is there. And of course, not only lay people are accessing these front ends. Yeah? So also experts are doing it. So this is what we just found out from the from this user surveys. That's quite interesting. Huh? Yeah. Further question on the MOOC, right? Yeah, yeah. on the MOOC. We, uh, what uh, it's planned is that the MOOC will just um, have two parts. One part of the importance of modeling the resource limitations in the energy transition, which should be part of the introduction and then go more focus on the how to use and how to develop and what is the structure of the of the model and uh, and the model strengths and limitations that will be the the MOOC. I have another really short question about um, the openness because this was one of the main topics of your presentation. Um, why did you decide to um, publish your model in the end of the project and don't follow the some of the basic concept of open source release often release early um, and what uh, license do you plan to use? Um, it's not released at the end of the project because the project lasts 2000, 2000, 2019 and the model will be released, the global model will be released at the end of this year. Okay, um, so, so, but the, I, I totally understand of you, uh, your point. The point is here we have, to, we have a trade-off between release it as soon as possible, but release it at, you know, with all the necessary checks and debugging process. So that is uh, the fastest that we can. Ah, the license. The license, uh, we are also just um, um, uh, thinking on that. It will be open source, and uh, but then we are just considering and we are analyzing that. So if you have suggestions, please, are, they are very welcome. <laughs> okay, so many thanks. I think if there are any further questions, perhaps they will be for further discussion. So let's give uh, another uh, ring of applause. <laughs>